Internet, Eric here, uh, back with week four of Sharks and Schlock. If you don't know what that is, Patrick from Have Cheetah Will View and I, um, we are challenging each other. Every Wednesday, I'm going to watch and discuss a shark film from Tubi or shark film that's on Tubi uh, of his choice. And he's going to uh, watch and discuss a schlock movie that's on Tubi of my choice. And um, we'll see at the end of this month who really got kicked in the nuts harder. So far after last week, I still think, uh, I, still think I, I lost last week with Sharks of the Corn. Anyways, today, this week, I am going to discuss from 2007, I believe, 2007. I was really interested in this one, and Patrick had no idea about this. I think he said he literally picked it kind of like, you know, with Shark Huntress. He picked it for the cover and the fact that it also has Jeff Fahey. Today I am discussing Blue Demon. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes, what have you. Basic plot of this is we are following a couple that is going through a divorce and the, the I'm just going to call, I don't know anybody's fucking names, all right? The the wife, um, she, well, the wife and the husband, they're, they're part of this project where she has put microchips into the brains of six different great white sharks and she is able to control them. And she's going, she's doing this so the government can, I believe, help keep people from invading the country. What happens is due to a budget cut, the electrified fence has been turned off. The sharks get out. They are eating people. Jeff Fahey is a general who is now using them to place bombs in places. And the soon-to-be divorced couple needs to stop him. That's what I was able to get from it. Okay, I just got done watching this. I don't know if it's because Sharks of the Corn was so god-awful last week. I didn't mind this one so much. Uh, acting. Your two leads, the divorce couples, they're not awful, but they're not really good. They don't have great chemistry together. They don't have great chemistry with anyone else on the screen. They're just kind of there. All right. They have a sidekick who is just kind of there. Not very good. Not awful. I want to praise the actor, the dwarf actor, little person, what you want to say. I've seen him before. He is in uh, he is in Death to Smoochie. Apparently, he was on like five or six episodes of Seinfeld. Um, I've seen him in so many other things. Um, he was in uh, Jingle All the Way. I think he was the I think he was the dwarf uh, actor who was working with uh, Jim Belushi, who is selling the uh, the fake uh, Turbo Man dolls. Anyways, he is really good. I liked his character a lot. This movie. I think to a, one of its faults is it doesn't know if it's trying to be a intense, air quote, shark movie or a comedy. You know what I mean? He is obviously there for comedic relief. He is, uh, I guess you would say, the boss, the, the, the boss of the couple, uh, the leader of the project. And he's just there to be funny, whether it's, you know, taking shit from Jeff Fahey, whether it's doing like a physical prat or something like that. He's a lot of fun. I liked this guy. Every time he was on screen. Other actors, we're going to get to Jeff in a minute. Um, they're just kind of there. They had, a, they had a recognizable face. If you grew up in the 90s and watched that show Step by Step with Suzanne Summers and Patrick Duffy. Uh, the, um, the youngest daughter, Al. She was Patrick Duffy's uh, daughter. All grown up. I had a crush on her then. She still looks good as of 2007. I think she's got a podcast now. I think she's got a podcast now. I want to listen to it. She's there. She's there to just be in a bikini. And yell and scream and tell people to get out of the water. She's fine. Now we have Jeff Fahey. And I told Patrick the reason why I was interested was because I'm a huge Jeff Fahey fan. Even if the movies he makes are garbage, I really like him in it. Like, it could be The Lawnmower Man or, you know, which is a garbage movie, but he's great. Body Parts. Decent horror movie. He's great. Not a fan of Psycho 3. He's great. Love him in Planet Terror. He sucked in this. He was awful. And I think he was, I think it was because the director and the writers, again, didn't know the tone of the film. Do we want a serious shark movie or do we want something goofy and fucking stupid? And I think Jeff was kind of leaning towards the goofy and fucking stupid thing. He's trying to, he, Jeff Fahey's an intense looking dude. 
You know what I mean? He's dressed like a, he's dressed like a general. He's got the stogie. He's, he's he's barking orders, but he comes off as just such an inept idiot. And I don't know if that was the intention or not, but it I I couldn't stand him in this. He was a buffoon, and not in the fun way. He was just he was stammering his lines. So I don't know if he even read the fucking script. Um, he was just he was not a lot, he was not fun. So the acting is is up and down. I really like that uh, the little person that that was the the boss. I guess you would say. Um, the rest of the film, I'm torn, man. I'm really torn. I mean, this movie really is fucking dumb, and it's not necessarily fun in the fucking dumb category, if that makes sense. But there are some things that I really like. There was a really good chase scene, a car chase. You find out that um, the sidekick to the married couple, he is now work he's working with Jeff Fahey, who wants to take care, you know, take the sharks and use it for his own personal gain, uh, his own personal gain. And um, there's a really, he kidnaps uh, the blonde, you know, the wife, and uh, it's a really good chase scene. Um, the, the opening sequence, I really like, and then they have to fuck it up. Uh, there is like an initiation for a sorority. There are a bunch of girls are making the new girls swim out to the buoy in, you know, you know, in the air, in the, the lake area or the ocean, whatever. She makes it there. Well, she, at first she says there's something in the water. They're like, yeah, this ain't, this ain't true, blah, blah, blah. She makes it to the buoy. One of the girls falls in. You could, Because military shows up. One of the girls falls out of the boat. And um, they do the whole, you know, give me your hand. I got it type of thing. She pulls off a stump. It looks fine for a budget of $1.50. It's a great opening sequence, but then this this director he makes a really dumb decision of showing the uh, the girl who was doing the initiation. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. The camera zooms into her mouth, and the camera comes out of the mouth of the husband eating a fucking sandwich. A lot of these choices I just don't get. Why the fuck would the director would do this? The choice of music, it's a mixture of intense air quotes move uh, music and really dumb. Derpy music that just doesn't fit. Like, you know, where did you get this type of, like, of music? So I really don't know if the director knew what he was doing. Um, the sharks look fine. They're CGI. They look good when they're in the water. When they gotta jump up and eat people. I mean, it's better than a fucking shark puppet. Like, <laughs> like Sharks of the Corn or anything Mark Polonia does. Um, so it's, like, on par of, like, a shark sci-fi movie. Um... I couldn't help but laugh. I mean, Jeff Fahey's death is really fucking stupid. The final shark, you know, because uh, the blonde, the, the the wife, she she destroys every shark. You know, she she triggers the uh, microchips in their brain to blow them up. A, another fisherman kills one of the other sharks, and then there's one left, one rogue um, that doesn't have like can't really take the directions of the microchip very well. Jeff Fahey, I guess, is going to, he gives it a bomb and he's going to place the bomb somewhere. After the microchips are fried, it comes back to its original spot, like its original hunting ground, and flies into Jeff Fahey where he's being held captive by the dwarf. And Jeff Fahey salutes the screen and blows up. Fucking stupid. But I couldn't help but laugh. The final scene is the couple going to court to discuss what happened, you know, the situation and what happened. And of course, you, you find out oh, they didn't. The wife didn't sign the divorce papers. You knew right from the fucking start if these are your characters are going to get back together at the end. It's a long, drawn-out kissing scene. They still don't have any chemistry, but I couldn't help but smile because I keep talking about how I don't know if this director knows what he's doing with the tone. It's really dumb. She's behind the American flag and she's talking about you know what happened. Do, do we think they? If we did this again, will we lose control? She says, I don't know. And the camera zooms into her eyeball. Then we have the ending credits. And I don't know if this is because you had the actors from Step by Step or what, but they did what we call, or what a lot of people call, 90s TV uh, credit scenes. Kind of like, you know, in Predator, at the end of Predator, you have all the, the actors. And it says, Jesse Ventura as Blaine. He smiles, you know, spits tobacco, smiles at the camera. Mac was Bill Duke, and he, he offers the uh, some liquor to the audience type of thing. Well, we had this, and every single person that was in this fucking movie 
has a you know part in that little montage. You had the couple. You had, of course, Jeff Fahey, the, the sidekick, the dwarf actor. You had every single person that was in the sorority thing you know, in the beginning. You had the little girl who was on the dock. You had the one person on the beach who was in the movie for 30 seconds. Every single person had this little montage of their scenes with their real names to this cheesy fucking... It's, like I said, it sounded like a 90s song that you would hear like at the beginning of fucking Full House. It was dumb and stupid, but I couldn't help but smile. And they even gave credits to the fucking shark. All six of them. So I had to roll my eyes. I had to, to smile. Dumb as hell, but it got a chuckle out of me. Overall, where would I put Blue Demon? It's tough, man. Because like I said, the tone. Is it a good shark movie? No, not at all. Is it a dumb shark movie? Absolutely. But is it painful to watch like Sharks of the Corn or uh, Shark Exorcist? No. It's not as bad as a Ouija shark, you know, stuff like that. But it's not as good or entertaining as Swamp Shark. Blue Demon. If you're interested in a mixture of a wannabe serious shark film mixed with a lot of stupid shit from like the 90s, from like I said, a 90s TGIF type of feel, this is this is for you. Me, I don't regret watching it, but I will never watch this again. I just got done on Tubi. I didn't hate this film, but I definitely gave it a thumbs down. Never going to watch it again. But if you like stupid shit, this might be your thing. So... A lot better than last week, but that isn't saying much because a colonoscopy could have been better than last week. However, I will say, Patrick, you're definitely losing this week because I know he is discussing the Leprechaun's game. Um, Blue Demon, it killed 90 minutes, and it didn't kill me watching it. So that's it. Thank, I just just disappointed in Jeff Fahey. Overall, characters are there. Acting's not that great except for that dwarf actor. Um, sharks didn't look so bad. It was just, you know, the tone was just all over the place. Kind of boring in parts, but that fucking 90s, you know, credit montage. Fucking hilarious. So that's it. Like and subscribe. Comment below. Tell me, have you seen this? Do you like this? Do you hate this? Have you never heard of it? Do you have no interest in seeing it? Um, check out the playlist for Sharks and Schlock. Um, I have everything in order from my films that I'm discussing to Patrick's that he's discussing. Uh, give them a watch. Give every one of them a thumbs up and a comment. We appreciate it. Um, what do I have planned other than Sharks and Schlock for next week? I have no fucking clue. Um, I know I have a poll going on X at movies, beer, uh, movies underscore beer 365 and over on my community post on uh, YouTube. The last two, uh, the next two, well, let's see. I had a poll and uh, you guys were going to discuss or decide the next franchise I'm going to jump into because I'm done with Wreck and Quarantine. And uh, both polls had two different winners, so it's now going to be decided between Puppet Master and The Howling. And both polls are, you know, neck and neck, but each one is beating the other. So I got to make a decision somehow. Not looking forward to either one of them. I didn't like the first Howling, but I did like Puppet Master of the Last Reich. We'll see. Anyways, um, like and subscribe, all that jazz. No clue what I'm going to talk about uh, coming up next, but uh, I'm not looking forward to next week. The final film of Sharks and Schlock, A Weed to Shark 2. Godspeed. Cheers.